friend and welcome to my first ever recap of Mr. Supranational. This is a big moment for the channel friends. This is a big moment if you've been here for a while. My name is Danny Walker. Thank you so much for clicking the episode. If you enjoy content like this, I hope you'll consider subscribing and hitting the notifications so that you know when new episodes come out every single week. And if you found the channel because you're a pageant contestant preparing for your next competition, please check out my free pageant prep course that I'm going to link in the description below. First, I have to say thank you so much to Hoselli, the National Director for Supra United States for Miss and Mister. Because of him, I was able to attend both international pageants and have VIP seating. So if you want to check out my vlog, that'll be coming out. And when it does, I'm going to make sure that I link it in this episode. I'll tell you that watching the show in person gave me an entirely different perspective of the show. So stuff that I'm going to go over in this episode is going to be highly influenced by what I saw in person. First, I have to commend the Supranational Organization for an incredible opening number. I was so curious what they would do for a male pageant for an opening number because this is the first time I've been to this international pageant. And they opened it up with this scene from West Side Story, and that was sentimental to me. That was my first high school musical that I participated in. Wow. And so it was really, really fun to see how they incorporated dancers as well as the contestants. I was so impressed and I was just delighted. After the contestants did the opening they walked out for introductions you'll see each of them with their flag and there was a voiceover of them introducing themselves and what I liked about it is they introduced themselves in their native language so that was a really cool part of the show next they did swim and I have way too many favorites so just get ready be prepared I didn't watch the preliminary competition I was busy getting lost in Poland I really like that they opened this segment with El Salvador and he did this flip in the opening and that's one really big difference that I've seen in male pageantry that I don't know if a lot of you have realized. They're not afraid to feature one contestant and not the rest. I can't imagine going to Miss USA or Miss Universe and seeing one contestant get a little extra dance solo. I feel like people would just be up in arms about it. But in male pageantry nobody really seems to care or at least I haven't heard that from them so it's a very different dynamic that you're already noticing and seeing when you watch a Miss pageant versus a Mr. pageant. And I will say this about male pageantry. I feel like female swimsuit competitions are a little bit more sexy but the guys just seem to have a lot of fun with it so it's more of a fun vibe versus sexy. So I have too many favorites here and I'm going to go down the list very quickly with a couple of notes for you. I liked Korea, Italy, Greece, Cuba, El Salvador, Argentina, and then Indonesia, Thailand. Puerto Rico reminds me of an actor and I cannot remember what actor it is. And then Philippines, I thought he did a great job. And I actually got to meet him before Miss Supranational. And he was so sweet and he said that he watches the channel. So if you're watching right now, hello Philippines. Yay, can't wait to go visit the Philippines. And then Peru, Nepal, Panama. I thought he was so handsome. I thought that he had potential to place in the show, but this is my first time watching, so I really don't know what judges are looking for. USA. Okay, yes, I'm a little bit biased, but I will say I think Keith has such beautiful eyes. That's what really draws me to him. I just feel like he's so handsome on stage, too. He has such a great stage face, and he does a great job. Mexico, huge fan fave. Oh my gosh, he had lots of people cheering for him in the crowd. But I have something that I want to say about him at the end. So stick around till the end because it'll make more sense then. Vietnam, oh my gosh, that jawline. That jawline. I feel like you couldn't appreciate it from the front shots of him. But when he walked down the runway and I watched him going down the side, I was like, oh my gosh, loved him. Spain, it's so funny, he didn't stand out to me as much at the competition, but then when I went back and watched it on the telecast, I thought, oh my gosh, I love Spain. I love him. He looked so great on stage. He did such a great job. But my side view of him, something about that did not influence me in the same way as watching the telecast did. Poland, the hometown man, he had lots of people cheering for him too, obviously, but he also did a great job. He deserved it. These men, though, were literally just so beautiful. That's the best way I could describe it. You do not see, or I do not see, men like this just walking down the street every single day. And it gave me a new perspective. Because what I realized is that it was a little bit difficult for me to separate men that I was attracted to, men that I'm like, ooh, call me up, from their performances. And I, I just was thinking, oh my gosh, this must also 
greatly affect, whether they realize it or not, it'll affect their biases, straight judges who judge female pageants. It's like if, if you have a type, then it's kind of hard not to score that type higher. And I just felt so conflicted about that. I had to constantly bring myself back. I was like, hold on, hold on. I know you like him, but how was his performance actually? During the next segment of the show, we got to see some behind the scenes footage from a recent photo shoot that the men did. And then during the next part, we got to see this fashion show where all the men wore a red outfit. And behind them displayed was their best image from the photo shoot. So we got to see the results of that. It was so cool. It was so well done. And the interesting thing when I watched it back on the telecast was that they actually color graded it. So everything was in black and white and then red. So it was kind of a cool effect that we saw. But of course, I had a few favorites for that part of the competition. Argentina is somebody that stood out to me. But for this segment, I really wanted him to just soften the facial expression just a little bit. Cuba, it's really interesting. I love loved his image for this segment, but I didn't like his performance as much. I thought that he was really, really dipping his head very, very low. It's like his go-to at the end of the runway. And he's so handsome, I just wanted him to hold up his head a little bit more, but that's a personal preference. El Salvador. He really, really impressed me. Fun fact, Jose Lee, who directs United States, is also directing El Salvador. And so we were sitting together and he was telling me, watch out for Adrian, you have to cheer for him. So we were definitely cheering for him the entire time. And honestly, it wasn't just me. I was very surprised for a country that's not necessarily a huge sash factor country, at least in women's pageantry, that he had so many fans. He had so many people cheering for him during the show. You can really see his modeling experience shine through. I know that he has experience with runway modeling and a lot of photo shoots, and I just felt like he nailed this portion of the competition. I really, really loved his eye contact with the camera. It was working. Haiti was another contestant that when I saw him for this, I was like, oh my gosh, he looked like a real model. He looked very bookable. And that's the thing, sometimes when you do pageants, you don't always have modeling experience. Sometimes you do, so I never really know unless I research each of the contestants, but he did very well here. Indonesia for this, this is where he caught my attention. I felt like he was very fierce for this part of the competition. Mexico, okay, he was not hype here. Great walk, wonderful jawline, great facial expression. I loved this performance. Beru had great eye contact with the camera. I feel like they could cast him as the next Superman. That's what he reminds me of. Poland, once again, had lots of cheers in the crowd. I will say that it was interesting that they styled his hair forward for the photo shoot, but when he walked out on stage, his hair was slicked back, and I really preferred it back, more out of the face. Puerto Rico. I wish that he would have looked forward the entire time just because it would give you more of that fashion vibe. You don't see high fashion models looking left to right at the audience. You see them looking straight forward. But that's a really small critique that I had for him. I still think that he did a good job. Spain, fantastic. Also, I will tell you, he is so tall. If you can't tell on screen when you see him in person, so tall. USA, go USA. I loved Keith. I think that he has a really, really great runway walk and this is what stood out to me about him when I was watching him compete at nationals when he did his casual wear type of walk. That's where I was like, ooh, I love him. I think he's gonna win. Venezuela, do they ever not do well? Do they ever not do well? Vietnam, once again, I am such a fan. I'm such a fan. I could have seen him in a top five, frankly. If I would have been judging, he probably would have been up there. Now they narrowed the contestants down to a top 20. This is different from Miss Supernational where they had a top 24. And that makes sense because there were less contestants in the Mr. Division. This part of the show was so cool though. I love the dancers. I love that they had two live DJs on stage. That was so much fun. And then the contestants escorted out one of the dancers one by one. It was just like a really fun moment during the show. I feel like there's no pressure. This doesn't feel like it with male pageantry versus with women's pageantry. Argentina, he's so handsome. I just wish he would have given me more in the face. Just wish more. I just wanted him to give me a little facial expression change. Brazil did a good job here, but I didn't understand. I thought that his coat was oversized for him. And because it was such a bright color, it you could really tell. It really, really stood out. If it were a darker color, I don't think I would have noticed as much. Cuba, good once again, but my only note, please raise your head just a little bit. Watching El Salvador throughout the competition, he slowly became my major favorite. I really, really appreciated his humble confidence and I heard 
that he has a really inspiring story and he used to be a street performer and that's how he learned how to do all of his cool break dancing and flips so I felt like I just really really liked his humility and it carried across so well on stage. France had fun with this part and I appreciated that. Grace, very handsome, very confident, and I love his little wink at the end. That was fun. Indonesia did a great job here, but I felt like this performance for me was a little bit middle of the road, so I didn't know how the judges were going to score him. Mexico, he is just so handsome, and he did his little dance at the end of the runway. He knows what he is doing. You probably couldn't see this, but during the other segments of the show where the contestants were dancing, Mako was on my side of the runway, and he was on the side, and he would do that little dance move and the crowd was eating it up so of course he was gonna bring that back at the end of the runway. Beru loved this performance from him this was great. Puerto Rico for this part of the competition brought out a very different vibe. I felt like the vibe he was bringing out was like the hot guy in high school that never looks at you pays attention to you or notices you. I felt like it was a little bit intimidating versus everybody else was just like having a great time during this portion. Spain great smile here loved the natural confidence. Venezuela and Vietnam, I'm going to talk about them together just because they both did a little heart thing at the end of the runway. I just didn't think it was necessary. It reminded me of when Miss contestants blow a kiss, and that's something that we more so see at Miss Grand International. So I was like, good performances. I was like, ah, oh, but we, had, nah, we don't need the heart at the end. Now they narrowed it down to a top 10, and only a few of the contestants stood out to me here for the evening wear portion. I loved Greece and El Salvador, but what was so interesting about them walking together is that Greece had a big smile on his face and El Salvador was a lot more serious. So it was just sort of a strange pairing for this part of the show. Vietnam, so handsome. So handsome, like I said, he's one of my personal faves. Puerto Rico, well, well done here. Mexico had a very charming smile, but I feel like he knows it. He knows he's good looking. After their very quick evening wear walk, we got to hear from the top five. And the top five were Cuba, Mexico, Puerto Rico, Greece, and Indonesia. Cuba was asked, what is one lesson you learned during this experience? He said that he learned about friendship and acting from the heart and soul, that that will open up every door of opportunity for you. More than beauty or sacrifice, your heart is going to be what opens the door. So I felt like that answer was definitely his winning answer, definitely. And then Mexico was asked, would you, Mexico was asked, would you prefer to be famous or really successful? And why? Then he said, being famous carries a lot of responsibility. Not everyone is able to carry that responsibility. But if you do, you can have a message and you can share that to the world. We're all different, unique, and that's what makes us special. I felt like his answer was kind of like what happened to Venezuela's answer during the Miss Division. He shared a wonderful message, but he kind of wasn't answering the question. All he said was that fame is a big responsibility, but he never said if he would rather be famous or really successful. Although, if you're really famous, I feel like you really end up being successful anyways, right? People know who you are. They're kind of one and the same. So it was an interesting question. Puerto Rico was asked, what is your message to young men watching you right now? He answered in English, but I feel like he should have answered in Spanish. I think he would have had a much stronger answer, but he said, be sure that you'll give a message helping people, those in need and in doubt of their capabilities to achieve a better existence. So sounds great when I'm reading it like this, but he didn't answer it in a confident way. And I think that that was because he didn't use a translator. Greece was asked, what is the most important quality a good Mr. Supranational should have? He said it is behavior and attitude. This is what defines a Mr. Supernational. This contest is not about how you look, but it's how you treat others and how you can help. So great answer. Indonesia was asked a very classic question. What is the best piece of advice anyone has ever given to you? He said, speak with your heart, act with your heart. Everything that comes from your heart will be true. It will be helpful to others and can change the world. The results were as follows. Puerto Rico was fourth runner-up, which I understood from his answer, Mexico. He was third runner-up. And the thing that I wanted to share about him after talking about this whole show is that I really felt like he felt like he was going to win. That's what it looked like from the audience perspective. And I've seen that happen to Miss contestants as well. I actually see that a lot in youth pageants, like 18 and under, there's contestants that people know are favored or maybe they were the first runner up last year and they come in and they're 
overly confident on stage and sometimes when you're overly confident you make mistakes you make mistakes and so I felt that's really kind of what happened here. It seemed like the judges made their final decisions based off of not an overall performance, but instead the final onstage question. So that was the determining factor. And I think his answer could have been stronger if he would have answered it more directly. Second runner up was Greece. Loved him. I was a fan of him throughout the entire show. Congrats. First runner up, Indonesia. This made a lot of sense. He had a really great answer here. Once again, very heartfelt. And then Cuba. I just felt like his answer, it edged out Indonesia's a little bit. He did a great job throughout the entire show. But regardless of results, congratulations to all of the contestants. It was so much fun. Seriously, watching all of you, I was literally just like so delighted in my seat because the show was so great. It was just so different from women's pageantry because the guys just seemed a lot more easygoing about it versus women are very competitive about pageants. Well, congrats to everybody. I enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you want to see more like it, comment below. Let me know what you want to see on the channel next. And of course, don't forget to check out my recent Miss Supra episodes as well if you're a fan of the Supranational Organization or want to see what it's all about. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you very soon.